Welcome to correlation. In this video, we're going to talk about correlation, a fantastic way to measure the strength between two quantitative variables. So let's dive right into what correlation is all about, because if you're going to look at a scatter plot and talk about it, you better know what correlation is. So in a scatter plot, it's really easy to see direction and form. Like you could see, oh, those lines are going up or those lines are going down. The, you know, it's, it's positive, it's negative, and oh, I see a curve, I see a line. But strength is sometimes a little bit vague. Like so far, we've kind of only said strong, weak, or moderate. Well, that's really vague in terms of measuring strength. So statisticians have found a way to actually measure the strength of a linear relationship between two quantitative variables by assigning the strength a numerical value. So no longer we're going to use weak or strong or moderate. We're actually going to assign a numerical value to the strength so we could kind of see a scale of weak to strong. We call this value the correlation. That is the key word here, correlation. You might have heard that word before, uh, but now we're going to really talk about it. So correlation, the definition of correlation, is it measures, um, it, or the correlation gives the direction and quantifies the strength of the linear association between two quantitative variables. So a lot going on here. Let's talk about this. First, the letter we use for correlation is R. Maybe because there's two R's in correlation. I don't know, but the letter R is correlation. Um, keep that in mind. We call it the correlation coefficient. Like that's its full proper name. Most people just say correlation, but the correlation coefficient is the actual value R. Now, R gives direction, so it will be positive if your data is going up, it will be negative if your data is going down. Okay, so that's helpful to know. It also quantifies the strength only in linear associations. So if you do see a curve in your data, you would actually never, ever, ever, ever even think to use correlation because we only use correlation to measure the strength of a linear association. And the two variables have to both be quantitative variables. If one of your variables is categorical or both are categorical, you would never, ever, ever use correlation. It actually would be incalculatable. You, you couldn't do it. So people are fools if they try to use the word correlation when one or both variables are categorical. So again, the correlation gives the direction and it quantifies the strength of a linear relationship between two quantitative variables. Now, big question is how do you find R? Well, the correlation coefficient can be calculated using this extremely ugly formula. I don't even want to waste my time walking through it, but it essentially uses z-scores for your x values, z-scores for your y values, multiplies them together, adds them together, divides by n minus 1, a whole bunch of junk. But however, the most common way you are ever going to have to find R is using technology, either a calculator or some type of computer app or something like that. And to be honest, in most situations, especially on the AP exam, they're just going to give you what R is. The job is more for you to interpret and understand what it's telling you. But this formula for R, trust me, will never, ever be expected for you to actually use it to calculate R, but I did want to show it to you. Typically, there's tons of different ways that technology can find it very quickly for you. Now, let's talk a little bit about R. So the correlation R is unit free. It, you know, the, the explanation for that is, is it does use z-scores to calculate it, and z-scores have no units. So there is no unit after correlation. So don't ever say the correlation is uh, 0.63 inches or anything like that. Never, never, never. And it's always a scale between negative 1 to 1 inclusive. So the correlation could be as low as negative 1 or as high as positive 1. It will never be a number outside of that. So if somebody tries to tell you that the correlation between two variables is 1.7, they're a fool. Now, a value of zero right in the middle would be very weak, extremely weak, no linear association. So that would be like a giant blob of dots where it's not going up, it's not going down, it's literally just nothing. Or actually that could be a parabola because half of it's going up and half of it's going down. That would all create a correlation of zero because there is no linear association. There's no line whatsoever. Now, a value of one would be a perfect linear association. So that's where we see our dots going in a perfect straight line. Negative one does not mean weak. It just means perfect in a negative direction. So the closer you get to zero, the weaker the relationship, the stronger you get to either negative one or positive one, the stronger the relationship or the more linear the relationship, just um, positive or negative. 
So here's actually a couple of examples that I wanted to show you about different R values, just so you could see them. Um, I, I guess I could take the time to go through all of them, but maybe if you just want to pause the video and take a look at them and try to comprehend them. Again, don't worry about like, where did they get 0.9 from? I, I need to know how that sound. Again, it's a very ugly formula. In most cases, you'll just be given it or you can use technology to find it very quickly. But you'll see here in this top left, it's extremely positive, very strong. Are they forming a perfect straight line? No, that would be an R value of one. But it is very clearly forming a line, so it's going to have a very strong R value of 0.9. Um, in the bottom right-hand corner right here, you see something that is almost zero. The R value is 0.1, very close to zero. It, it, and it's, listen, it, it it's like a swarm of bees. Like, I don't even see a line. I don't see it going up. I mean, maybe there's more points that go up than go down, so maybe that's why it's slightly positive. But at the end of the day, being so close to zero, that is essentially no linear association. So here's the examples. Again, again, the idea is the, the closer the dots form a line, the stronger the R value will be, whether it's positive or negative. Those are pretty strong R values. And the closer to zero, the weaker. Anything, you know, here's what I kind of do just kind of as a rule of thumb for me personally, is um, anything from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5, right? Negative 0.5 to, here's zero in the center right there, to positive 0.5, any, anywhere in there, and this is a terrible drawing, but that would be very weak. Um, above 0.5 or below negative 0.5 is where we tend to get, you know, stronger. And obviously, the closer we get to the negative one, the one, the stronger we become. But again, don't worry about ever having to find R with that ugly formula. Typically, you can use technology or we'll just give it to you. I've already said that a couple of times. I want to make sure that that's very clear. But even an R value of 0.5, like, okay, it's it's positive. Definitely definitely going up. Um, here's negative 0.6, definitely going down. But it's it's kind of looser, right? They're not so strong together. So that's kind of where we get that more moderate strength. All right, a couple more cold, hard facts about R. A um, couple of these things I've already actually mentioned, but I want to mention them again. Correlation can either be positive or negative, hence why it does measure direction. It does, in fact, measure direction. That's one of the parts of the definition of R. Um, correlation is only used to measure the strength of a linear relationship. So if you see a curve or a parabola, don't even think about using correlation. You just wouldn't even use it. So it's, it's got to be linear. So if somebody is reporting a correlation to you, that's them secretly telling you that the relationship is already linear because if it wasn't linear, they wouldn't even be giving you correlation value R. Um, a correlation coefficient close to one or negative one does not necessarily mean that a linear model is appropriate. Now, that's a very confusing sentence because you might be like, well, wait a minute. Earlier, you told me that one is a perfect linear association, and so is negative one, just one up and one down. So how are you now turning around and saying that a correlation of one or negative one does not mean it's linear? Well, here's why. If you look at this data, looking at the height versus the pressure of cylinder heads, you clearly see a curve. Like it, It's no doubt there's a curve. But if I were to use a mathematical formula for correlation, you know, a mathematical formula that just simply takes numbers in and spits out a, a, an output, if I were to plug the values from this graph into that correlation formula, you are going to get a correlation. Like, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be negative because the data is clearly going down. And it's so nicely constructed, like the points are forming almost a perfect curve, that it, it might be a fairly strong value, like something in the neighborhood of negative 0.8. But we need to know this data has a curve in it. So we would never, ever, ever give a correlation. So you can't just look at correlation and be like, oh, negative 0.8. That's clearly a good, strong, negative relationship. No, you need to also look at the scatter plot to confirm that it's linear. Because if it's not linear, you should never even be using correlation. So the point I'm trying to make is that sometimes curved data will produce an R value that might make you think it's strong. But it's curved, so you should never be using correlation in the first place. So keep that in mind. So if you know you're linear and you have a 1 or a negative 1, then you know you have a very strong linear association. If you know you're curved, you might get up something close to negative 1 or 1, but you shouldn't even be using it in the first place. So hopefully that, that makes sense. That's a, definitely a very big point I'm trying to make here. All right, so another cold hard fact, a perceived or real relationship between two variables does not mean that change in one variable causes change in another. That is, correlation does not uh, necessarily imply causation. So if you have a relationship and it is like positive 0.999 is your R value, boy, those dots are forming a very strong linear relationship. Maybe you look at the scatter plot and, and boy, are they very tightly compact. But just because you have a strong correlation does not mean that X 
causes why. Remember, we talked about this earlier with experiments. You don't ever want to use that word cause unless you're in a very extreme certain situation with an experiment. So do not ever think that a strong correlation means that we have causation. No, 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 no. If you do have a strong correlation, all that is telling you is that your data is very linear, forming a nice line, and that there is an extremely strong connection, association, relationship, but we would never ever use the word causation saying X causes Y to change. Great relationship, just not a causation. Keep that in mind too, please. All right, another fourth uh, cold hard fact here is correlation is only used to examine the relationship between two quantitative variables. I mentioned this earlier. We would never, ever, ever, ever use correlation with the word categorical. Never, never, never. So if one or both of your variables is categorical, don't ever use correlation. You can actually find mistakes all the time. Like I, I read newspaper, internet articles all the time, and people say, oh, there's a strong correlation between eye color and uh, somebody's height. Well, no, that's impossible. Possible, okay, you can't use the word correlation when one of your variables is categorical. Um, that's impossible. Remember, co correlation is a mathematical formula. It needs numbers. It needs quantitative data to be calculated. If some or all of your data is categorical words, you can't plug that into a formula. So if somebody does try to use correlation, um, they're a moron. And I always um, challenge people to try to, you know, show me examples where people do use correlation incorrectly. So don't be that person because I like to. Um, tease those people. All right, cold hard facts, more, 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 five, five, five. I should, this should be five, six, seven. So sorry about that, six and seven. There we go, okay. So correlation has no units. I actually said that earlier. Don't give it any. If somebody tries to give it cor uh, correlation units, they're wrong. Switching the X and Y will not change the correlation at all. Remember, um, the formula is using multiplication of Z scores. So if you just switch the X and Y around, it might matter to your scatter plot. It might matter to the direction of your problem, but it actually doesn't matter to correlation at all. However, if data points are added or removed, the correlation can and will change. Let me explain a little bit more about that. So here are four identical graphs, right? They're all linear. I hope everybody sees the line being formed. And it's pretty strong, right? Maybe the correlation here is, um, I'm just kind of making this up, but positive 0.75. So it's pretty strong, right? It's not perfect strong, but it's pretty strong. But, you know, what would happen if we were to add a point like this? Well, that point clearly doesn't fit the pattern. It doesn't, it doesn't support the pattern. It, it doesn't make the, the, the points more tightly forming a line. So adding a point like that would weaken your R value. Maybe your R value would drop to 0 0.7. It's going to be uh, weaker for sure. Um, what about adding a value that is in the data? It fits the pattern. Well, if you're adding points that continue the pattern and fit the pattern, that's actually going to strengthen your R value. So maybe your R value goes up to 0.76, okay? But again, it's, it fits the pattern. Those are good. Here's a value that um, extends the pattern. It, it actually makes it more linear because it says, all right, here's the data. Oh, let's extend it. So again, this is another point that's not in the data. It's outside the data, but it does fit the data. It fits the trend. And points that fit the trend are going to increase your correlation. So maybe that'd be uh, a 0.8 now. And uh, lastly would be another point like this. This point is way off. It clearly does not fit the pattern. The pattern is that the data should continue to go up, not turn around and come back down. So a value like that is going to really hurt your R. It's definitely going to weaken your linear relationship. So that might drop us to, uh, you know, I don't know, just spitballing here like 0.6. But the idea is that if you add Add data points to your to your to a, a scatter plot. It definitely can affect R depending if it fits the pattern, extends the pattern, or does not fit the pattern whatsoever. So keep that in mind. All right, last thing here. Can't emphasize this enough, right? Correlation coefficient is only used to describe the strength and direction of a linear relationship between two quantitative variables. A lot going on there. Okay, so again, it is positive or negative, so it does describe direction. Um, it's got to be linear. If there's a curve, don't ever use it. Just be silly. So you do need to look at your scatter plot, make sure there's no curve into it. And your two variables must be quantitative or else you're just a fool. All right. Being a mathematical formula, correlation can be found even if the data has a clear curve in it, but it's only appropriate to use if your data is somewhat linear. We're not asking for a perfect straight line here, but your data has to be somewhat linear for you to ever use correlation. So again, correlation is going to give us a much better way to measure the strength of a relationship between two 
quantitative variables. Um, it's on this scale from negative one to one. And the closer we get to those ends, the stronger that relationship. But again, you got to make sure that you're linear in the first place. So that's it for correlation. So hopefully you learned a lot here about how to measure the strength of a linear relationship.